Hey guys, I'm actually working out a deal to sell this set, which is my 12 inch Zenith porthole set. I think I did a video on it when I first got it, but haven't touched on it since. Never restored it, never did much of anything with it except touch up the cabinet a little bit. Um, but I've got two porthole sets and they're very, very similar. The cabinets are pretty much identical, except one's just a little bit bigger than the other. So I decided I'd keep the 16 and try to sell this 12 inch. Uh, but one thing I want to do before I uh, sell it, oh by the way we worked out a price and all, the only issue is that the guy who wants it's on the east coast and I'm in the midwest so <laughs> we're trying to work out a transportation uh, arrangement, not the kind of thing you can just pop in a box and ship via UPS. Uh, but before I ship it out I wanted to make sure that he gets a good picture tube. The one that's in here, I'm pretty sure, is the original because it says Rolland on it, and that's what Zenith used back in the day. This base is very loose, and I recall when I tried testing it, when I first got it, the readings were a little intermittent, and I think that's just because of some bad connections on here. So what I want to try doing is a little solder wick and get it out of all five of these contacts. These two aren't actually going to anything. They're just kind of spares to help the socket hold on there and pull the base off. Make sure everything's cleaned up inside there and then glue it back on and connect these pins and make sure it's a good CRT. If it's not, well, I'll just have to bite the bullet and put in one of my good spare 12 LP4s. One of the reasons uh, he was interested in this set, and I like it too, is that it does not use a metal cone picture tube like almost all the other Zenith porthole sets. They did make a few that used a glass CRT so you don't have that huge high voltage uh, conducting surface in there. Also these are much more reliable, you don't have that issue with the metal glass uh, seam developing leaks. And there, there is actually a 12 inch metal cone in CRT, it's the 12 UP4 and I think Zenith may be the only one that used them and that's one of the reasons they're so hard to find. In the 16 inch sets they use the 16 EP4 unlike the much more common 16 GP4 that RCA and most others used. And then same with the 12 inch, they used kind of an oddball. So, uh, between the popularity of these sets and the oddball CRTs they use, it can be really hard to track down a good spare. Okay, that might be ready to come up. Yeah, there we go. That was easy. I think. As long as the wires can get hung up on the crud that's inside, there's a bond stuff. They based the CRT. Oh, the wires might be still pulling on. Oh, very loose on the top. I think there's one down here. Still hanging on. There we go. It's actually this guy that was hanging out. So. <laughs> well, most of the material inside was gone. Normally there would be a bunch of, um, well, this stuff inside there. It's kind of like a Bakelite crude epoxy type material. So I'll have to uh, use some modern adhesive to put that back on. I can confirm that all the pins are in good shape. I wonder if this base got rotated to over 
Well, no, the leads are the same way. I'm just surprised because this wire is twisted over quite far, and the other three aren't. I would think it would have been a less stressful arrangement to have this base rotated a bit. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about better now. It's this this wire, the topmost one. It's having to bend from way over here and get twisted and bent around. So it's in line way over there. Alright, what I'm going to do now is clean up these leads very carefully. I don't want to break one off at the base. And uh, then I'm going to get out my Sencor tester and carefully clip on some leads and test this because if it really is bad, I'm not going to waste time gluing the socket back on. I carefully tinned those leads and hooked up my little Sencor clips. Now let's give it a try. Yep, I have filament glue. Alright, not very good signs. Cut off, non existent, and emissions, non existent. Okay, do get some cutoff control though if I put the bias all the way down to minus 20. And just a bare little tweak of emissions. I'll let this sit for a while longer and uh, see if things improve at all. Actually, I can already see that they are improving already very slowly but uh, missions are creeping up slowly slowly and now back to the porthole set let's see if things are looking any better oh yes indeed they are we are into the good range excellent I'll cycle the power off and on on this one a few times and uh, make sure it stays in the good. Here's a look at the basic procedure I use for reattaching a CRT base. First I took some solder wick and cleaned out the ends of the pins so they're hollow and clean all the way through. I then took some solid copper telephone hookup wire, pulled out a single strand, stripped it, cut it into about six inch lengths, and I then tin one end, slide it through the hollow pin, and attach it to one of the CRT pins. Once I get all five attached, squirt some glue into, it, into the base, around the glass and inside the base, Carefully slide this back through using these wires to guide the pins, guide the wires into the pins. Then heat up the pins and pull out the copper, which is just kind of tacked onto the ends there. And then clean up all the solder joints, wait for the glue to dry. Alternately, this can be a little fidgety to deal with. Cut these steel pins back a little bit, make sure you clean them up good, and uh, tin them. And then make a little curly cue on the copper wire, like a pig's tail. Slide it over this wire, make sure they're soldered up together really good. And tin the whole length because you don't want this copper corroding inside the base. And slide this down and then just solder the copper wire to the pins rather than trying to fish this down all the length and reattach the original pins. Either way, works just fine. Takes a little bit of patience though. Um, you definitely take your time in cleaning out these pins, both the solder on this side and any of the remaining adhesive crud on the inside. A rat tail file, like a small jeweler's file, helps out with that. 
Alright, I got the base threaded on. Wasn't that tough in the end. Key is to get these pins cleaned out really well. Otherwise, the wires get hung up inside them. Start uh, kinking over inside the socket instead of sliding through. Now I need to glue the base on. I've used this uh, generally for all my two base repairs, but it, it does have a little give. So, I'll do a little research online. I'm guessing two-part epoxy is also a decent option. Something like this. One thing I'm not sure about is um, will it stand up to heat? These don't get super hot, but they do get pretty warm. That's why you don't want to use super glue. Super glue and heat don't mix. It turns white and crusty and it loses its uh, adhesion. I'm glad I did a little reading online because I read a, a warning that the epoxy may set up so hard that during operation when this heats up the glass may expand a little and crack if that doesn't expand at the same rate. Whereas this stuff has a little give after it cures. This is what I'm going with. You want to make sure you use sensor safe silicone. You don't want to have the stuff that has, um, uh, I forget what it is, acetone or something like that that can cause problems down the road. It's been about six hours and that's on there real solid. That's not going anywhere. Just a little bit of wiggle if I really apply some force. This isn't even fully cured yet. So, the last thing I want to do is clean these pins up a bit and test it again and make sure it's still working. A team not losing it, but a team winning it. And the Blackhawks won it. Alright, good news. Not only did the Blackhawks just beat the Red Wings, but this repair has been successful. We've got decent emissions, bases on there nice and strong, so and pop this chassis back into the cabinet. Now, if we can just figure out a way to get this to the east coast, it will have a new home. While we're having fun with CRTs, might as well take a look at this one, which just arrived. Also, got some quarter amp short fuses that should fit into these Admiral sets I've got. Thanks to Joe at Video Karma for that. So, this CRT is probably the biggest gamble I've taken off of eBay so far. Came out of a Stromberg Carlson combo set that I guess the guy had been trying to sell for a while local pickup only and uh, I guess finally after no takers after a long period of time I decided to part it out and I got the CRT. Now the reason I say it's a gamble is the base is broken off and it just has a little fragile wire sticking out uh, and I think he said he was only able to do a filament continuity test. For sure he didn't uh, have a full-blown CRT tester so not only might it be bad to begin with uh, one of those wires may have been damaged, and I won't be able to, to uh, use it at all. Now, assuming it is good, of course, I'll, I'll put a new base on it, and I'm hoping I can use it in one of my Dumont clone sets, or maybe even the Dumont Clifton that is going to arrive. Now, I know that the Stromberg Carlson I have and the Dumont Clifton use a 12JP4. And uh, those are the ones that uh, can get ion burns because there's no ion trap mechanism in it. And I also have a Crosley uh, Dumont RA-103 clone that I think does use a 12 QP4. And that one I think is a little weak, so I'm sure I can find a, a new home for this, assuming it's good. And that's a big assumption at this point. All I know so far is that it's a pretty sturdy box, and I don't hear any glass rattling around inside, so uh, I think it's survived in one piece. Alright, let's see what we've got. Oh, 
Hey, Merry Christmas. Well, let's hope so. It's a good sign. Perhaps they've shipped a CRT before. Oh, wow. Well, they actually did a good job. The box within a box, and they cut a hole out and put a box there on there to protect the neck and tape down the flaps. I like it. Nice way to do it. Especially in this case because the cap was broken off and it's it was so delicate. So uh, take my knife here and just cut around the tape. Carefully take this off and hope everything is okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> kind of thought there might be more packing on top of it. Do a little more trimming, I guess, to finally get at the base of this. I think I've got it loosened up now. I'll take it off. Wrap the whole neck in cardboard all the way down to the bell of the CRT. And more bubble wrap. <laughs> hmm, also appear to be some other items in here. Looks like they included the uh, screen bezel from the Stromberg. I don't think they mentioned that in the original ad, but hey, maybe I'll find a use for it sometime. Also something in here. I really wish they hadn't done that though. Because you know, when I pull off that tape, it's probably going to pull off the gold paint. can't stress this enough. Don't stick tape on anything. <laughs> Wrap it in paper or something first and then put tape over it. So this, I mean, was there really any reason for this? Couldn't they have just tossed whatever's in here just inside the box and everything else? But we'll deal with that later. Well, it certainly doesn't appear to be broken. That's certainly a good start. What about this? Boy, those leads really got mashed down. I hope that didn't happen when they packed this, but I got a feeling it did. Looks like all five are intact, but man... When I straighten those out, I'm going to have to be so careful not to stress those joints because they're all flattened over right at the glass metal interface and then kind of twisted around. I, I don't know if they did it when they packed this, but it sure looks to me like somebody wrapped something around this, mushed it down, and twisted it. The worst possible thing somebody could have done to this. Uh, I can see the remains of one broken out, one there. One, two, three, four, five. S couple over here, too. Now, what they sometimes do is they have dummy leads going through that, like, support elements inside the CRT neck. They don't actually go into anything, they just clip them off, so I'm hoping that's the case here, because you normally only have five pins on the CRT base. Two for filament. One for cathode, and then grid one and grid two. When I straighten these out, instead of just flipping them up, I think I'll do is I'll kind of keep pressure where it's already bent and bend it at a different spot to straighten it out instead of flexing the already stressed joint. I really don't like the look of the getters on the CRT. 
my gut feeling is that from these wires getting flexed that broke the vacuum seal and there's a lot of air inside but I did check the filament continuity with an ohm meter and it does seem to be okay so let's give this a shot Yep, it is glowing. Turn the lights off so I can see that better. And then I'm going to turn the filament juice up. 6.3. So if it's really gassy, the filament will burn out for before too long. It's a little bit of gas, it's going to glow blue when I try testing it. But, uh, so far so good. Shorts. Shorts. That's a bad sign. Well, well maybe not. Uh, <laughs> cutoff typically doesn't shoot all the way over that far. Um, but I can cut it off. What can happen is if gas leaks in there, the tube becomes, the gas gets ionized and the electron gun becomes more conductive than it should be and you can't cut off the emissions. But. Huh. Well, no. <laughs> maybe this is alright after all. A life test, rock solid. Huh. I'm very skeptical though, because unless somebody was operating this very recently, which I do not think was the case because of the damaged base, it should have taken a little while for this thing to come to life. Um, but that was reading really good emissions instantly. But I still do have cutoff. Huh. Well. <laughs> Who knows? I'll let this sit for a while, see what happens. But as of this instant, it's testing incredibly good. And I don't see any blue glow anywhere. I've had this running for over an hour now and cycled the power a few times and it still tests fantastic. Life test, rock solid. So I guess this is for real. It really is. It does test as good. Um, and something else I just noticed is that I'm pretty darn sure this is a rebuild. That sure looks to me like this was cut and then a new neck was welded on. Which could explain why it tests so good. That this is not the original electron gun and maybe this didn't see a whole lot of use after it was rebuilt. So now the challenge is to scrounge up a base. I think I've got one or two or three lying around here somewhere. And uh, attach it and glue it on. I to think, uh, I, think uh, I might have a base somewhere. Somewhere right around here. I've had the CRT running for over an hour and cycled the power a few times. And I'm very happy to say that the emissions are holding rock steady. So I guess I really did get very lucky on this one. Life test rock solid. Alright, so now what's next? Well, I've got to get a base on there. When I do scrap out CRTs, you know, when I've decided there's no hope at all, when I bust them up, I do save the bases, like this is from a dead 8BP4. But I couldn't find any 12-pin bases, or duo de cal, I think they're called. But then I remembered, oh yeah, there was a little bundle that came inside this box. And what do you suppose was in there? Well, the single ion trap for the CRT. Ion trap magnet, I should say. Very nice to have. And what do you know? There's the CRT base and the CRT socket. And the base still has a lot of the old... Uh, some early type of epoxy, I forget exactly what it's called. It's kind of like Bakelite. Just get these apart. 
So uh, the reason I like, I'm glad that there are remains of the old stuff on there is that it'll give me more for the uh, the new glue to, to hang on to something. So now the challenge will be to thread those little wires through these little pins. I put some epoxy around the leads where they enter the glass to provide some stability so I'm not quite so paranoid about flexing these wires. That won't do a whole lot to keep air pressure out if there is a breach because there are tons of pressure per square inch but it does add a little strength I think to the wires. So uh, I knew I would have to add extension wires because these are so twisted and contorted I don't think they'll fit through the base and go all the way up to the tips. So I cut them down short to make sure that my little solder balls don't uh, get hung up. I try to slide this back on and then I made sure the copper was clean, made some corkscrew extension leads and soldered them on and now I'm going to thread the base down through there and uh, get some glue going like I did on the 12LP4 and then uh, solder the pins and I'll make sure I clean those wires about, actually I've already tinned them good enough I think so I should get uh, a good solder joint when I get this base on there I ended up cutting off those extension wires at uh, different lengths so I could thread them through the pins one at a time also I found it using a little LED flashlight shining up in there while peering down through the base as I aligned each wire helped out a lot so now it's on there, it's still free, I haven't soldered it up yet so I'll squirt some of that uh, Permatex adhesive down in there, snug the base down and then connect up the pins, cut off the excess and do a final test and hope that this thing is still good It's been about five hours and the Permatex is set up pretty good. So I hauled out the CR70 for one final check. And hopefully this thing is still good. Oh, control. Yeah, 6.3 filament is glowing. Good, didn't short anything else. Awesome cutoff control again, still I should say. And alright. Yeah, it's nice there's a red tick on here. Never noticed that before. I know there's one over by 6.3 for setting the filament voltage. I wonder, what, I wonder if that means that's what a, a new excellent CRT should test like. Anyways, obviously we got good emissions and life test. Fantastic. So, <laughs> I'm amazed that after the mangling this thing received with all those leads being mashed down, it still seems to have a hard vacuum and be, uh, be usable. So, for the time being, this will get carefully stored away for such a time as uh, I need it. I should mention too, if I didn't before, I can't remember, it's been a few days, but this has a different type of high voltage connector than you'd see on something like this. So This is um, the much more common type, where there's kind of a, a metal hole there, and the CRT lead kind of snaps inside. This has a little metal post that sticks up in the middle. Unusual. So, if you were going to try to put this into just any old set that used, like, say, a 12 LP4, you'd have to uh, maybe do a little modification, get your high voltage connector to attach. Uh, all right. I hope you enjoyed this look at resurrecting a couple damaged CRTs.